All right, what's up everyone? Today we're gonna to be doing questions seven through 12 of the 2023 US NCO local exam. So this is the lab section. Um, let's start with question seven. What is the mobile phase in thin layer chromatography? Um, the mobile phase is gonna be your liquid solvent. Uh, so let's go through our answer choices. A, a liquid solvent such as isopropanol. Uh, that's perfect, that's a liquid solvent. That's exactly what we need. Um, but let's just make sure all the rest are wrong. Uh, B, a smooth, solid surface, such as a glass plate, that's solid, we don't want that. C, a coating on a solid surface, such as silica gel, also not a liquid. Um, D, a chamber, such as a glass jar, also not a liquid. All right, so the answer for seven is A. Hey, everyone, I just want to say if some of these explanations seem a little fast-paced to you, then I have a lot of videos on my channel that are more tutorial-based. Uh, they can help you learn the content and then come back to these tests to take full advantage of them. Also, if you're enjoying the video, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe. As far as I know, these are the only videos on YouTube that have work solutions for the USNCO. Uh, so a like and a subscription would help it reach more people. Um, and that's it. Thanks, guys. Enjoy the rest of the video. All right, let's move on to eight. What is the strongest acid? And so we have a bunch of oxy acids with various number numbers of oxygens. So let's write, uh, let's draw all these out. So HBRO is gonna look like this. Um, although the H is directly next to the bromine, in an oxy acid, um, the H is always gonna be on an oxygen. So B is gonna look like uh, this. The second oxygen is on the bromine. And then that's A, that's B, that's C. C is going to be, um, two oxygens on the bromine, and then D is going to be uh, three oxygens on the bromine. And so this isn't the Lewis diagram, this is just um, a general format for what these are gonna look like. And so how do we find out which one is going to be the strongest acid? Well, the strong acid is gonna have a major dipole moment. So if we, if we kind of separate the molecules into the hydrogen and the rest of the molecule, you have to decide which compound is going to have the greatest dipole moment. The molecule with the greatest dipole moment is going to be able to let go of its H very easily. And that's what defines an acid. So which compound here is going to be able to let go of its H? Which one has the highest dipole moment? Well, it's going to be the one with the most amount of oxygens. It's going to be D over here. So if you get rid of this entire section and you liberate the H, um, this is going to be extremely electronegative, so it can handle that negative charge very well. Therefore, D is going to be the strongest acid. All right, let's move on to question nine. Uh, which compound when dissolved in water will increase the electrical conductivity of water the least? Well, the relationship that we need to use here is that as you increase dissociation, dissociation, you will also increase electrical conductivity. So whichever compounds dissociate a lot um, are going to increase the electrical conductivity a lot. So we're looking for the compound that will dissociate the least. There are two answer choices that we can get rid of basically immediately. That's going to be C and D. Magnesium chloride and ammonium bromide are all uh, are both ionic. So magnesium chloride is just going to dissociate into uh, the magnesium ion and the two chloride ions. And then ammonium bromide is going to do a similar thing is going to dissociate into the ammonia uh, molecule, the ion, and the bromine ion. So these two um, are going to dissociate a lot, therefore they cannot, uh, they're, they're gonna increase the electrical conductivity a lot. So the two that we have left is SO3 and H2O2. SO3, when it reacts with water, is going to produce uh, H2SO4, which is sulfuric acid. And sulfuric acid is a very strong acid, um, very strong acid. So it's going to dissociate a lot. And when it dissociates into its ions, it's gonna increase the electrical conductivity a lot. So A cannot be it. Therefore, hydrogen peroxide H2O2 has to be our answer. And that makes sense because hydrogen peroxide is very well known as a very, very weak acid. So it's not going to increase the electrical conductivity a lot. So our answer is answer choice B. Let's move on to question 10. Which metal reacts most vigor vigorously with water? Uh, the metals that react uh, like a lot with water are going to be your alkali metals. And those are gonna be the uh, elements on this column. 
So lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, francium, these are going to react a lot with water. You might have seen like a lithium fire. Um, lithium reacts strongly with water and you, you have like lithium fires which are very, very dangerous. Um, so which, which alkali metal, uh, which answer choice is an alkali metal? Aluminum, not it. Zinc, not it. Mercury, not it. It has to be cesium. So D, the answer is C. Let's move on to question 11. A student determines the acetic acid concentration of a sample of distilled vinegar by measuring 25 ml of the vinegar with a volumetric pipette, then titrating the sample with standardized sodium hydroxide solution using phenolphthalein as an indicator. Which error will give an acidic acid content for the vinegar that is too high? Let's go through our answer choices. A says the titration flask has some distilled water in it when the acidic acid sample is added to it. Now, uh, you can have extra distilled water, but that's not going to change how much acidic acid is in the sample. So you're going to use the same amount of sodium hydroxide to titrate it. Um, therefore, this is going to have no effect uh, effect on the, con the, con the uh, concentration that you calculate. So it can't be A. B, the volumetric pipette has some distilled water in it, in it when the acidic acid sample is measured with it. If the volumetric pipette has uh, distilled water in it, then that means you have less acidic acid um, than you should. Therefore, when you go to standardize it with sodium hydroxide, you're going to use less than you need. And then when you, uh, when you use those uh, values to calculate the concentration, your concentration is actually going to be less. Um, concentration. Um, so this does the opposite. This will decrease the concentration. C. Some of the vinegar remains in the volumetric pipette rather than being dispensed into the titration flask. This will do the same thing. Uh, this means you have less acidic acid, therefore you use less sodium hydroxide, and then when you go to calculate it, your concentration will be less than it should be. So it's similar to B. D, the endpoint is recorded when the solution turns dark pink instead of faint pink. Now, um, although phenolphthalein doesn't really turn dark red, I think this is red, um, it does turn like a dark purple if you add more base than you should. When you use phenolphthalein as an indicator, you should record it when it when it is a faint pink color. But if you keep adding more base, it will get a darker pink color. Um, and that's not what you need. If you have a dark red or I guess a dark pink, um, then that means you've added too much of your base. You've added too much sodium hydroxide. And so if you do your calculations with excess sodium hydroxide, what that's going to do is that that's going to give you an acetic acid content that is higher than it should be. You're going to calculate a concentration that is greater than it should be. So uh, D checks out. D will produce um, an acetic acid content that is too high. All right, 12, last question. Which 50 ml container would be most suitable for measuring and dispensing 37 ml of an aqueous solution? So let's go through our answer choices. A here is a volumetric flask. Volumetric flasks have one marking over here, um, and volumetric flasks are good for making like standardized solutions. So if you wanted to dilute something, you would um, add a certain amount of solution and fill to the top with water. Volumetric flasks are very accurate, but they only have one marking. So you, you cannot um, have 50 mils and then dispense 37 mils of it. You just wouldn't know how much 37 mils is. So A is wrong. B, this is going to be a graduated cylinder. And although a graduated cylinder has markings, graduated cylinders are not very accurate. Graduated cylinders are uh, mainly used for making reactions go. So you could have a reaction happening in this graduated cylinder. That's why it's kind of graduated. So you could kind of swirl it around and the liquid wouldn't, um, you know, leave the container. So B would not be suitable for measuring and dispensing 37 mils because it is inaccurate. C is a graduated cylinder. Graduated cylinders are great for measuring and, disp and dispensing liquid because they have a lot of markings. So you could imagine filling up to 50 mils and then dispensing only some of that. So C is a good candidate. Uh, D is, is a dropping funnel. Um, this is used for dispensing liquid. And uh, this little handle over here, is, uh, it's helpful because whenever you're doing uh, reactions where a gaseous um, condition is required, when you go to dispense your liquid, the gas, um, the, this, this uh, little handle will make sure that the pressure is stabilized and the pressure is constant. 
So this is not going to be suitable for measuring and dispensing liquid. Um, so D would be wrong. Uh, so C, a graduate cylinder, would be the most suitable option. And that was 7 through 12 of the 2023 USNTO local exam. I hope that was helpful. I hope you learned something. Um, thank you for watching, and I'll see you later. Bye.